Welcome to Cat Dominion YouTube channel. My name is Teresa, but you can call me Cat. This is going to be an Adventures with Plastic Crack video. As you can see, I've got this 28 inch Desiree here, or Nikki, whatever she's called these days. And um, I have previously divested myself of her original outfit, which wasn't too bad. It was a zigzag purple and gold party dress, but it's it's not my cup of tea. And I have had a plan for her for quite a while, and I'm not sure quite how long I've had this doll now. A few years, maybe? So I have purchased fabric, which is just a polyester and something t-shirt. stretchy. It's the correct red color that I wanted. Um, so I have, I do have a limited amount of material, but it's probably enough to make double of what I'm going to be accomplishing here. So this is also going to be popping into my art show playlist, but it basically is a doll video. Um, I don't have the materials to make the entire outfit, so this video is just going to be making a jumpsuit right now, because that's the the center portion of the ensemble. So I'm um, doing a lot of this off camera, but I'm just going to be popping back and forth to sort of explain what I've been doing. Uh, so I've got her hair up out of the way. I haven't really styled it yet. I have, haven't trimmed her eyelashes. I may do that when I'm done. I don't know. Um, I've just kind of pinned this scrap fabric onto her in case there's some pearl clutchers that want to cancel my channel for plastic boobs, but, um, anyway. So, I'm, I've got my reference image here. This is my reference. Alright. So, for a regular size Barbie in 1972, this appears to be made out of one piece of fabric. It has a seam in the back, it has an elastic waist, and there's a leg seam. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to accomplish this out of one piece of fabric, but the key points are full legs, elastic waist, smooth in the front. Now when this is done, there's going to be a skirt over it, so if this is kind of mangled right here, it doesn't really matter, but I'm going to try to get it as close to this as possible. I had expected that there'd be a bust, uh, i just try to say two words at once, a bust seam here, like on Malibu Barbie's swimsuit, but this is not that. It has kind of a rolled neckline, even though there's a seam there. So it's actually pretty simple. But scaling it up for a large doll might be a problem, especially because I have a different pattern for the legs already. So what I've got is I had originally made some some tights. Let me get this in here. I made some tights for my uh, perfume princess Cinderella here. Uh, for this miniature snug fuzz outfit. She has molded on shoes and I've made these little booties out of hot glue as best as I could. But with these tights there's only a back seam. And I'm not going to move her skirt up because it's fragile. Uh, but I had a miniature pattern that I made for these. So there's this that I had previously made. And I remembered when I did my other 28 inch doll okay. so I've got Summer here and I made her a tenterific outfit and I've made these leggings for her um, a larger version of the pattern that I made for the Snug Fuzz Cinderella now her shoes are molded on so her her tights don't go all the way down. They're hot glued on at the bottom and this is a separate piece. And I like to avoid... Excuse me, I had to hand stitch up the back. But from the front they look fine. It's a little bit mangled at the crotch. But you're not really going to see that under her... Um, under her little dress anyway. So... The point being that I already have a pattern for the leg part of the legs. 
and it's enormous as you can see how much bigger it is than the six inch one similar concept though and what I would like to accomplish is to have the top be part of the same fabric as this but if I can't then I'm gonna have to have it join at that elastic waist and hope for the best or make it two separate pieces or make a little swimsuit over the leggings which seems like extra work when I need it to really join at the waist so I'm gonna figure it out kind of it might just be like in a little elastic top but we'll see um, just putting this thing back so what I have done is I've, I've got my my pattern here but what I needed to do was to work out the top portion so I've taken the doll I've got this newsprint that came as packing and it's wrinkled because I didn't bother to iron it because you know whatever um, so I'm going to put this down a little bit um, I've gone over it with some sharpie that's why you can actually see the lines and is screwing the whole thing up. So I uh, just took the doll and laid her out. Her arms only go at a certain maximum angle. So I had her arms at the maximum and I traced her with the mechanical pencil. And when I pulled her up, I went over the basic body lines with the red Sharpie. Just to give me an idea. Now it's a little bit crooked so I decided to take the straighter side and I was trying to figure out where the pattern would be based on how this looks um, with this blue sharpie. And then I realized that there's no side seam so it has to be not only is there a fold where it's mirrored across the center but there's a continuous piece that loops around the arm and then there's a seam in the back. So I've sort of sketched out where this is going to be and where we need some elastic. And then I've taken this tissue paper that came as packing, which is wrinkly but not quite as bad because it's more like a, a thin fabric. And I've taken it and laid it over this and traced a, more of a straight fabric because I know it's going to be bunched here from the elastic so and then I folded this over because it's invisible and traced it back onto a piece that needs to be attached so this whole thing should be this and then another one exactly the same attached to it in the middle and I want to and since um, I'm not an expert pattern maker I usually have to test my patterns on a sample fabric so that I know that it works. I could test it on the red fabric but I don't want to waste it so I have this material here which is not exactly the same but it's sim it's a little bit stretchy it's a jersey material that um, was from a skirt that I cut down into shorts so I had some left over and this will be a good uh, simulation material so not only can I test the top pattern, but I can also test how it attaches to the leg. And this is cut so that it meets at the angle here, which I could do for this doll. She also has attached shoes. Um, she also has attached shoes. So the other one has this bow here and the pattern stops at the ankle. And what I want to do is bring the material down her foot a little bit. Eventually I'm going to turn this into boots, but I'm not sure how I'm going to do the bottom yet. So what I'm planning on doing is drilling a couple of holes with the Dremel tool so I can anchor the legging with thread at the bottom. And then I'll build the shoe around what's left. Um, and I probably won't be drilling with the Dremel tool because it's going to be like smoking and melting and stuff and I don't want to deal with that and the camera at the same time. So, uh, I mean in theory I could just cut it here and then stretch it all the way down but I'd still need a hole to anchor it. 
or I'd have to hot glue it and I just I don't feel like I need to hot glue it on there especially since there's going to be another shoe all the way up to her leg so um, if you figured out what I'm making um, you get a cookie uh, and if you haven't figured out what I'm making then you'll have to wait till I can afford to buy all the rest of the materials um, if you've been able to look at any of this long enough you can see that I've written 1972 jumpsuit on it and you can see by the pattern and the sort of uh, polyester tricot stretchy shiny cheap looking material what era it would be from anyway especially the way that this is cut so this is what I've been doing so far. So the next part that I'm going to do before I come back and, and show what's been going on is I'm going to cut this pattern out of this material and test sew it. Um, I might just hand stitch it real quick, but I've got the sewing machine. I might just uh, hand stitch this real quick just to get an idea, but I do have back here. the sewing machine underneath that gray thing. So I might do that too. But the, the key point is I have to test this and then see if I can in fact attach it somewhere to this other pattern. Because I I can see that, okay. So this is the side of the leg, right? So if this pattern is coming at a fold, it's going to be get it sort of backwards. It needs to come in kind of like this, but this is only one leg, so it would have to attach kind of strangely, and it might not work. So I'm going to have to probably um, suture it on afterwards, just so that I don't have to make a whole nother pattern, because that would just be annoying when I've already got one that works pretty well. So, uh, this doll has slightly different leg joints, so the pattern might be might work on her slightly differently um, because they did change the the way that the legs move. But it's mostly the same, so it should still work. And the material being stretchy, it should be fine because she has. Um, I have a video where I talk about the difference in their joints anyway. So if you go back you should be able to see that in the adventures with plastic crack playlist but um it does look like i'm gonna have to do those separately but i'm gonna figure out how to attach them and then i'll come back okay so as you can see my test sample came out pretty good i'm gonna take it off and show how i did it but i've got this rolled neck here uh, i've got a elasticized waist and I have a seam on, well, I have a join on the back, right? There's like a seam here and a seam here, and it's going to be, have a clasp. So this is a straight, just stitched, and then again, this part is rolled, and then just stitched here on the edge. And I have this clipped here. So I, I made some extra because I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do, and her torso seems longer than an original Barbie. And I think that's because how they, these are made. So I think the best way to anchor this to the leggings that I'm going to make separately is to have not a, like a real swimsuit, but just something that comes down to the bottom. So kind of a swimsuit, but not really. Uh, so I'm going to have to design the bottom. But let me take this off so I can show how I was sewing it. This is all just basted real quick. Slash and go. So what I'm going to use for the, what I'm planning on using for the elastic is um, probably this very one because it's red. I have an elastic hair tie. And uh, what I used for the production sample here was just a rubber band. So let me get the camera down onto the table here. This way. And I gotta lay. 
bag in the way. Make sure my tripod isn't going to go south on me. Okay. So, let me pull back and not turn the camera off. Okay. So, this is the interior. I had tried to get it so that there was a piece of fabric over the rubber band and it wasn't working because I anchored it in the middle and then I tied the rubber band um, to my sewing box and stretched it out on one side and I just loops looped the thread around it but by the time I got to the end I'm like it's just gonna slip out of there and I had this genius idea to tie a knot in the rubber band so now it won't slip through the thread because I put a bunch of thread loops right there and then I once this was sewn god damn it once this was sewn to the fabric then I used the pin here and just pinned it to the end of the sewing box. And now the tripod's giving me grief. I need better camera equipment, but I can't afford stuff. Okay. So, and then uh, I just brought it to the other end and tied a knot in the rubber band there. So this is just a sample, and I kept t sewing the end of this to what I was doing here, so there's like a random piece of fabric on the front because I didn't want to cut the stitches but it had the effect that I wanted of getting this gathered waste and I think uh, when I do the real one I'm not going to um, anchor it in the center because it makes it it doesn't make it it's not even um, and then also I noticed uh, when I was gonna sew the top come on I had, where did I put my pattern? I have, my brain was attached. I swear to God. Sorry, I was moving the camera with my chest. Okay. So I had the extra material up here on this piece of the pattern, which is the center, to roll it for this rolled front so that it doesn't look like it has a seam. I did put like one stitch in the center to keep it from unrolling. You can see that right here. I really didn't want it to show. It doesn't show on here even though I used pink thread on this black material. Um, I'm gonna use red thread on the red material so hopefully one little stitch is in the center isn't going to show on a doll this large. And if it does then I'll just give her a necklace or something to cover it up. Um, and I, and I didn't want this back portion to be rolled, and I also didn't want it to... Let me move this back up to the doll. I didn't want this back portion to be all the way up her neck, because the front portion goes up her neck a little bit. So I wanted to um, scoop it down a little bit, so where this meets... To put it all the way back on her again. I'm actually glad that this didn't require sleeves because it would be kind of a pain in the ass. So I wanted it to scoop down just a little bit so I tried to cut the pattern so that it would be flat here on the seam and then scoop down just a little bit. Now these aren't quite even because I basted them without matching them and I had already put the elastic in which changed the shape of the of the shirt. So what I did on the pattern, let me move this back now. I should have worn it, but I didn't make anybody sick. Come on. Okay. So on the pattern, this is the rolled part. And I had this is my seam allowance here. So I cut it basically to angle to the seam allowance. And then this part, I scooped it down just a little bit because it was up at an angle like the other side. So it's kind of flat now. I could scoop it down just a little bit more. And I, think, I think I might do that just with my paper scissors here. Not too much. There we go. 
Gonna keep switching between the paper scissors and the fabric scissors because all oh, hell could break loose. So the way that I did this, um, let me get this back off the doll here. Um, because I want, I didn't want a seam on the side here where the arm is. I have um, it's. Mm, come on. It's just barely pinched down at the bottom, and then the seam gets up to like a quarter inch at the top. So I just have it, it's basically just tacked to keep it from coming undone down there. And the way that it's cut, the back panel comes up a little bit further than the front panel, um, which actually works with the way that this. Um, you can I just got my finger all over the screen too. Um, you can see that on the sample that the seam is slightly behind the front. You can see it more on the back and that's how this one is has come out as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to figure out the bottom of that and I don't know if I'm gonna make another sample. I might. Um, but if not, I'm going to be coming back with the complete red top. And I don't know if I'm going to show how I'm making these or not. There's a hole for the leg. There's a dart for the front. And then these... This is like for the, this portion here goes around the butt cheek and then attaches in the middle. And then there's another one that's the mirror image of this that will be going up the other leg. Um, so that's how this pattern works. And when I make the, the legging portion, you'll be able to see that I need to tape this back together. It's printer paper. Okay, so that's what's next, is just um, figuring out the how to attach this. Here, underneath, just so, to hold it together. So it may turn into like a little onesie. All right, so that's it for a minute and then I will be back with the next section. Okay, so I did make another test sample. I had taken the doll back down to the paper. I had cut the paper so I had to reattach another piece uh, where the body comes down and the legs are and then I wanted to make kind of a French cut situation where it was higher and thinner in the middle and I knew that I needed to make the back piece longer for her rounded butt. So I taped another piece of paper onto the pattern. Um, I traced the shape that I made here onto some of the thinner paper and then I taped it to this one. I made a mirror image. So um, there's my fold and there's the front and I made the back longer and I tried to make a seam allowance and the way that the pattern came there's a space in the middle so I was like okay well I'll just put a dart in there. It's not something that I've done before. Um, so when I made it it came out wider in the crotch than I wanted and lower down than I wanted. Um, it's a little bit tight in the butt, so then I want it to be, and I made a little, I kind of messed up when I was sewing this seam together up here so it's not rolled as nicely. But in general, it works, and I could just do it like that, but I, I want there to be enough room for the leggings to come through because they're going to be up to about here and so I traced her back 
so she's not going to fall over. So let me get this down to the table. Okay. Um, so I was sketching on this one. I put it, I taped a new piece of paper on here and I was trying to reshape the dark because it looked a little bunchy around the hips and not as much room as where I wanted it to be. So I moved it up a little and it's gonna cross the waistband a little bit, um, but it'll, it should pull in the waist a little better without messing up the, um, the hip. And I want it to be higher cut, so I was trying to trace the line. And then this uh, and that can both be a little bit longer. So I took this whole thing with another piece of this tissue paper and I just um, traced over it again. So I've got it uh, coming up higher with the front pieces a little bit longer. And I had moved, well, the, I mean, the dart's kind of in the same place. Um, well, it's just because I traced it, but I, if the dart's up further, it's higher cut here. There's still going to have to be a little bit of seam allowance. Uh, there's a fold. So uh, hopefully when I go to cut this from the red material, it will work how I want it to. Um, and I, the sewing on the samples was very sloppy. Just... Um, is that even showing up how I wanted it to? Anyway, you can see I retraced it and it's cut bigger. Um, let me get back up here. Alright. I'll just bring it in like this. The I just used another rubber band. I was having some difficulty. I didn't really feel like doing that whole deal again, but I it helps it helps me figure out the in the construction when the rubber band has to go on. So it has to go on after the top is closed, but before the bottom seams are done. And then this just doesn't need to go down quite as far. Uh, so that helps. It mostly helps with just figuring out again like the order of the construction. So that's going to work more or less, and if I screw up, I think I have enough extra red material to to fix it. Oh, come on. Okay. So, that's how that's going. And again, I've got what I'm hoping is my final pattern, because I'm not, I don't feel like making another sample. It took me like an hour to do that. It took me about as much time as it did to make the first one, um, as it did to make that one. Um, and the slightly rounder versus the flat elastic worked better, but I was just kind of in a hurry and I wasn't feeling it, but, um, I have a more careful plan for the other one. And again, I'm probably going to use, um, a fabric elastic situation. So that's, that's how it is. And I'm going to make the leggings and then I'm going to make this out of the red and it should be good. And, and I'm going to go and take the Dremel tool and poke a hole or two in there to hold it down because I don't want to glue it unless I have to. Alright, so that's where we're at right now. Um, yeah, it's just hand stitched, basted as fast as I could to test the pattern. So that's how it is. Okay, so I've got these uh, tights sewn. They're a little bit loose, and on the other one I had taken and hand stitched the back seam to tighten them up more. But with this particular outfit, I think I, I don't want them to be pinched any tighter. So I made some extra fabric on the bottom, and I'm going to zoom in on that in a minute. But I, I have the pattern here. I probably could have taken this dart in a little bit more, but I forgot to do them and had to do them after I sewed the rest of it together. So. I've got this little seam here that comes together, that's this part here, and then this big U-shape here goes between the legs, and then the whole thing wraps around to the back, and there's two of them. Um, I'm going to turn her around for the back seam here. Now her butt looks a little bit chunky right now, 
Um, but if she's going to sit down, she's going to need that extra give. So I think it's fine. And again, part of why I don't want to tighten that. I am going to tighten up this top seam and just kind of sew it onto her. But I'm going to um, finish her legs first. So, um, so this, oh, I forgot about the feet, this, um, this waist here, I'm just going to tighten it and sew it onto her and back to the feet. Cause I just messed up what I was trying to do with them. I'm just going to, oh, I'm going to find those needles now. I see one, but I don't see the other one. Oh, there it is. Okay. So I went ahead and used the Dremel tool to drill holes in her feet. So her shoes are solid. And this one, I wasn't, I couldn't quite f find the hole. So I drilled that first and it was too solid. So I came back and found the space. So I've got a hole on the other side here. I sanded it a little bit just to get the rough edges off. Um, so I've got these two needles and I'm going to be sewing this. I have these all set and ready to go too. There we go. So even I was sort of guessing where it was and I figured I'd be able to find it even if I have to use the curved upholstery needle. I had this ready to go off camera and then I dropped it. Okay, there we go. So I've got, you can see I've got these two holes all the way through. And the other shoe is the same. Um, two holes. So I'm going to be pulling some thread through there. Um, to attach this bottom portion. So this is longer than it needs to be. And even with the amount um, from the pattern, it goes down almost um, under the foot anyway. It kind of looks like an ice skater shoe right now. So at some point I'm going to build a boot around there. I just need to get it in focus. And then I need to get the the right kind of fabric that I want for the boots. So I'm just going to sew that on at the bottom in the top and then I'll just show it real quick. Um, and then I've got to make the top out of the red material as well. And I'm glad this worked out because I didn't really have enough material to screw this up. Um, these tights that I made, this pattern are actually really easy. It's just sew here and sew here and then sew up and down really quick, really simple, and it works. All right, so get her in focus for a second. So I'm going to get the <clears throat> scraps all over. I'm going to get the red version of her little swimsuit situation here with the changed cut on the bottom and a real band, not a crap band, and we'll come back. Okay, that's about as much of her as I can fit in the screen at one time. She might be kind of blurry. I can't really look at the camera and the doll at the same time. So this is the completed construction. I would say that it looks pretty similar to the goal. Um, so I've got this higher cut here. It's very skinny in the middle. I've got this attached to her feet. I've stitched it through the holes that I made. I had one hole that didn't come out right, so I had to get the Dremel tool out again and redo it. Um, but I finally got the needle through there. Um, again, it looks a little bit loose in the thighs, but when she sits down, it's going to... Um, she's also going to fall over if I don't reposition her. Um, stay. Okay. So it's kind of up her butt. Um, but this is actually supposed to be covered from here to here at some point anyway. Um, but this is part of the outfit that I am recreating. Uh, so there's going to be boots, there's going to be a skirt, 
There's also going to be a jacket. Um, this one has one little snap on it because it's for regular Barbie. So I put one up there and it wasn't enough. So I put a second one and then the elastic that I used had a gap. So, and I didn't like that. So I just sewed it together there at the closure because it's probably not coming off her anyway. Um, so she's got enough room in her pants to sit and her little thong here is big enough to go all the way down there. Um, and I think mission accomplished. There's, I can see the little tack there to keep that roll in and it's kind of, I mean, it's sort of noticeable, but not as much as the waist. Uh, the waistband is as about as straight as I could get it, and it's probably going to be covered, but it actually doesn't look that different than this one. The only thing I don't like is that this flares out a little bit here, uh, but all things considered, not too bad. And I didn't, I only had enough t-shirt material really to do this once, so I'm glad that it came out properly. So let me get the camera in here a little bit, and um, I'll do a pan up. This took me... Uh, between tracing and pattern making and testing those samples and then really working on this one pinning sewing um, ironing all the seams trimming the seams the tights there only took me like I don't know like a half an hour or something but um, this the top this little jumpsuit swimsuit thing took me like three hours to put together so this whole thing I spent like a whole day on it it took me about eight hours from start to finish and it would have taken me a lot longer if I didn't already have the pattern for these pants again her ass looks really bunchy right now but um, she's got enough room to sit down and it's gonna be covered anyway so there's it's not really worth um, redoing it this would be a good pattern for a superhero costume. It would probably look better without the gathered waist, but it, um, and I could have cut it to not have that. But I was trying to be true to the original. This looks kind of like uh, children's garbage food tomato flavor, orangey red on my camera, and I don't have the editing skills to. Um, to fix the color but it's a darker red than it's showing up on here and this is also darker red but this is the the situation here I mean it's not really any more bunched up than that one is because it was like one piece and then um, you can see here where I've extended the dart up past the waistline so uh, this huge thong thing worked out really well and it was a little bit weird to sew the pieces but this is how I wanted it to look in the sample uh, obviously I had to recut it and it worked out about how I wanted it to so she's I got her balance so I can finally fix her hair now that I don't need it to um, to show off her little suit there so all of the day's work and uh, when I get the pieces for the rest of her ensemble, I'll be doing another video. So um, I, I need to put her, well, she's not done yet, but I have finished dolls in my deviant art um, gallery, doll customization gallery. I'm going to sit her down so she can sit in the camera while I get my sign. Uh, and then just on the feet there, the front wasn't staying quite on, so I ran a line of thread up here, and there was a seam on her foot, so I've got the threads through the seam, and this other piece didn't want to go in there, but, you know, you can see how it's supposed to be. So, I'm going to get her there. So, my schedule for the Adventures with Plastic Crack is second and fourth Friday of the month. And I highly doubt that I'll have more supplies for her in two weeks because of the way th things are right now. It might be another year. It took me like 10 years to do my, uh, my My Size Barbie and I finally did her. But, uh, 
there will be more plastic crack adventures as the playlist purports it's weird having my sign on a different spot and move it in all the way of course I'm gonna have this sign up at the end of the video anyway but just for funsies um, so I'm not selling any dolls right now but I do have stuff on Etsy I've got a couple of stuffed animals I've got a set of foam lotuses and I'm gonna do some individual ones eventually but I had to get some other work done this week so soon they'll be singles um, but there's a set there's drawings paintings uh, watercolor there's an et a couple of etchings uh, coupon code 3 star 17 17% 17 off I also have chapbook packs on there and some here that are in in process those little not rainbow ones on the end are calendar pages that I chopped up for envelopes so those are writing and little bits of art it's kind of like kind of like getting a little oracle reading it's it's uh, I like to call them synchronicity stimulus packets so if you're not into the doll stuff or if you just want some weird little art things and some poems um, can get one of those the chat I don't have any um, outside of the already sealed envelopes but the chapbook packs are about yay tall and it'd be something that your larger dolls could hold if they needed something to do so that's about that size um, it's like one eighth of a sheet of paper um, I have merch and prints there a cafe press and deviant art so I have a lot of psychedelic stuff I've got some celebrity portraits uh, and I'm I've set those up to donate portions to charity when I actually sell prints or the actual drawings so check those out uh, Etsy and Deviant Art and then uh, my merch on Cafe Press uh, there's a couple of fashion designs but most of it's going to be psychedelic stuff um, so if you want to trip trip your entire balls out while you're going to the grocery store you can get a t-shirt or something um, and what else I think that's it. Um, my playlists, I have tarot readings, I have entity channelings, I have some art stuff, I've got a bunch of doll stuff. Um, so check out those playlists. Um, if you want to throw me a subscribe, um, like, comment, share, that's something you can do that helps me out a lot and is totally free. And again, if you want to throw money at me, I've got all this stuff. I've got coloring books, uh, dark poetry, and uh, if you are entertained in any way, you enjoyed it, um, you want to do an energy exchange, hit that tip jars, PayPal, Cash App, or Venmo. And I also do tarot readings, so if you want me to divine some information from the Akashic Record for you in a clear and not usually that concise manner, um, check it out, because I have... Uh, you can get a reading for as cheap as nine dollars just to give it a little test drive and then see if you want some more heavy duty information from the other readings if you like that um, all the readings I have for sale have their own playlist if you want to see how they work um, I think that's it I have tomorrow this is gonna drop for the 13th so tomorrow which is the 14th there's another uh, zodiac, zodiac sign element monthly reading. I have them staggered, so there's one that comes out every week. I think it's, is it water? Is it earth? I think it's earth signs this week. Earth signs tomorrow. I haven't recorded it yet. Um, don't, uh, yeah, so don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, check out my playlist tab, my discussion tab, and stay groovy, and we'll see you later. Bye!